Hey everybody, welcome to a bald and less bearded My beard. I broke my beard. Episode of the show. Uh, I, uh, for some reason, I uh, always end up on the right side. Um, something about the way I lay or something like that. It always ends up like trimming, like trimming off just a corner of the beard and I end up lopsided. So I, every once in a while I got to trim it and ended up trimming it just a little bit more this time. So uh, I'm even further away from my wizard beard. So uh, bummer. I, I don't think I'll ever get the wizard beard. I, I don't know. But uh, anyways, uh, this is the second week of me doing uh, malt whiskeys. Uh, that are not single malt, that are not scotch, uh, that are just straight up, just malt whiskeys. Uh, two of these are, uh, at least two of these, possibly more, are, uh, hmm, doesn't like that. Let's see. Let's see here. Can I get it to, man, my, my camera just does not want to focus on that at all. So, uh, but anyway, oh, wait, there we go. Uh. So this is uh, Togochi, uh, Togochi, something like that. I'm sure I'm uh, completely, uh, completely butchering that, but uh, it's a uh, it's a malt. It it is actually uh, what is it? Uh, uh, it's a it's a, a sourced whiskey. Uh, it is aged in the town of Togochi, Togochi. Uh, but it is, uh, it is just, it's actually, uh, what is it? Scotch, uh, the, kind of a Scotch malt and a, and a Canadian grain. So it's a uh, blended. She's smooth, like a blended whiskey. Uh, from those two countries, a little bit of Scotch, a little bit of Canadian, uh, to make a Japanese blended, uh, no age statement. So, uh, uh. And that's the thing is the Japanese uh, really take a lot of pride in, you know, they're not like a lot of American uh, sourced whiskeys. Uh, sourced is kind of a, a kind of a bad term. It's kind of a pejorative. It's it's they look down on it, but the Japanese take great pride in uh, becoming master blenders. And so they will source from this and source from that, and it's it's not uh, it's not like big, some just some big factory that they order from. They uh, are actually very particular about where they source it from, and how they blend it, and and how they age it. And so the distilling itself uh, isn't is basically just an ingredient to them, and then they take that and and make their uh, their craft. And but they're very uh, uh, they're very artisan about it. An artisan honey. Uh, they're very serious about it, uh, and so it's it, it's done with uh, a lot of care and a lot of thought and a lot of research. So uh, um, they take you know it's it's so it, this is this is definitely the the result that they are looking for. And if they were the distillers, I I, I don't know if it would really be that much different, uh, other than their goal being what they have here. So this probably sourcing from several different places probably gets them closer to their goal. Now, uh, like last week's, this is uh, slightly peated. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but uh, usually a peat is something uh, that is it's kind of it's kind of like a lot of things in in life, um, especially when it comes to taste um, or smell. Uh, it's kind of like a patchouli or sandalwood, right? So there are people who love patchouli and sandalwood and or sandalwood, and they are huge fans of it. And they don't understand how anybody could take offense to it. But then there's people like me who smell patchouli or sandalwood. And I think I need to fart to improve the smell. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about peat is Peat is uh, peat is just kind of skanky. It reminds me of skanky beer uh, from my twenties. It's uh, it's something to be avoided. It, it, it kind of tastes a little swampy, a little musky, a little. It, it's mostly things that I kind of try to avoid. 
but uh, but there's the people that are connoisseurs of it are big connoisseurs of it. So if you're a fan of it, um, you know you could probably tell different peats and and oh this is a Lafroy, this is a you know and and me it's just always as soon as I the peat usually is just like yeah it would have been better without that peat. So uh, I'm gonna try this. This is probably one of the lightest colored uh, whiskeys that uh, I've tried in a while. Um, it doesn't really uh, doesn't really leave a lot uh, on the glass. Uh, you can see this is uh, this is from a festival, by the way. This is Glen a uh, Glen Karen gla gla yeah, a Glen Karen glass uh, from a festival uh, in in Washington State called Proof uh, that we go to every once in a while. But uh, yeah, if you go in and do that, and you see there is just not yeah not a lot not a not a it's not a not, not a really thick viscosity to it. Uh, it looks like it's very thin. Um, so let's smell it. See what happens. Hmm. It actually has kind of a pleasant smell. Uh, I'm not really smelling the peat. Um, I did read that it was lightly peated, so uh, my experience may be different than what my research is. I'm tasting kind of a, I mean, I'm smelling kind of a, it's almost like a butterscotch. And 2% butterscotch ripple. I don't know. Which is not something that I read at all. Uh... Yeah, and maybe like uh, uh, kind of like if you walk into a bathroom right after it's uh, been cleaned uh, with pine salt. You know, it's got kind of that light, kind of a light, just a real light pine salty kind of a kind of a smell to it. Uh, but mostly, I'm smelling like a butterscotch, which is bizarre because neither of those things were mentioned in any of the research that I had. So, uh, anyways. Um, Hopefully uh, this is better. Uh, I can hopefully I can get a, give a better review of this than uh, I did last week. Um, last week was a very apathetic review, uh, but uh, this being as thin as it is and as light colored as it is, and and it being as low of viscosity uh, as it, it seems to be, um, I like the real high viscosity, uh, non chill filtered whiskeys. So. Uh, Let's see. Anyways, here we go. Dark Helmet, do your thing. Ludicrous speed! <gasps> well, I gotta say, uh, it smells a lot better than it tastes. Uh, if you like peat, I would highly recommend this. If you don't like peat, I highly don't recommend this. Um, it's pretty much, yeah, it's, it's it's not lightly peated. This is not lightly peated. Um, I mean, I've, I've tasted whiskeys that have a much higher peat than this, but uh, this has definitely got that, that uh, old gym shoe kind of a taste to it. it 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 reminds me of an old gym shoe and that's that's what peat is to me it's it's old gym shoe um so if you like peat you will like this uh if you're not a fan of peat if you're more of a bourbon or an irish fan uh you will not like this so uh anyways that's all uh i i, I do still plan to do my uh uh bourbon uh blind my blind bourbon taste test uh rematch uh but i needed to buy one of the one of the whiskeys i was kind of low on so i i need to go and buy that bottle again uh, what's wrong dude you yellow so uh we haven't really because of uh the the covid19 thing we have not uh we've been trying to limit our exposure and uh trying to stay away from you know the public as much as possible so I've been kind of I haven't really been to the whiskey store so uh, 
that's that's kind of uh, put a put a cramp in things a little bit. I uh, will see you next week for another episode of Nerds Drink Whiskey.